like most people, when they think of paper, they think of like copy paper coming out of your printer at home. <laughs> Handmade paper itself is, I mean, it is its own art form. It's, it's almost like a sculpture. I'm Stephanie Hare, and this is Share Studios in beautiful Ellsworth, Maine. Let me show you around. It's primarily a studio space for us. I do a lot of work in the back, but it's nice to have a few samples here. A wide variety of people buy my paper. A lot of times it's an artist who knows exactly what they want. They'll tell me I want 50 sheets of this. And sometimes it's a wedding stationer or a bride. I make a lot of stationery. <laughs> My introduction to handmade paper was working at a little gallery in Brooklyn, Maine. I was a gallery manager and learned uh, how to make custom lampshades. That's really where it all started for me, was the beauty of handmade paper as it's illuminated. When I was making the lampshades, it was mostly white, sheer kind of things. So I was focusing more on doing stationary, smaller things, playing around with color and paper. I love the blues and greens, little pops of reds, kind of things that remind me of Maine. As you can see, this one has feathers embedded in there. Each sheet is actually made on its own, so it's called a deckled edge. So it's this rough edge, and each fiber actually has a different kind of deckle style, but this is more tight, more of your straight edge, but still has enough of that rough texture to it. I think I'm really all about the texture with paper. A lot of my work is online. It was on Instagram, and I, I do the best I can taking dynamic images so that people can really see all the little details. But there's nothing like picking up a sheet of paper and really being able to feel all of the certain qualities. And sometimes those imperfections is what really makes a sheet beautiful. It's been really fun to finally have a space where I can show people in person. As an artist, kind of when you're first starting, I really wanted a nice studio. I was just dying for a space that I could spread out and make exactly as I wanted. We actually moved to uh, an old farmhouse on the coast of Maine um, to renovate it and to live there for free. So that really was the key to keeping the studio going and being able to focus on my art. We moved to the back of the studio. This is where I spend most of my time actually making the paper. <laughs> I'm actually using what's called half stuff. So they're taking the raw fiber, they're partially processing it, so it's half processed, and they're making it into these sheet forms. So all of these are sheet form kind of things, which I will take, soak, and turn into a pulp later on. When I'm thinking about what I'm going to make, I'll choose the fiber first, knowing what kind of color I wanna make. That's really what it's all about, how the pigment sticks to the fiber and how it shows up on that raw fiber. So I have a variety of fibers laid out here. Unbleached abaca, which is probably what I use the most often. It holds color really well. Um, when I want a nice, rich, dark color, I use this. If you're doing like a letter press, you want a little more weight to it, I add the cotton to my abaca over to a kozo. This is like the raw fiber. So when I get the kozo, it comes in a big bale <laughs> and I separate them into smaller pieces so that I can cook it down. So that's actually cooking it in a caustic soda doing the whole process, beating it into a pulp. Whereas this is kind of saves me a little bit of work where it's half processed, which is really nice. So this is also Kozo. This is a blue, but it has been dried in my dry box system. So really smooth and restraint. Whereas this was air dried, so it has a really nice texture to it. When I first started, I, I actually really liked all of the, the imperfections. You know, you want each sheet to look a little bit different. It has a little character. So this is my beater room. I've got my two pound beater here. The main job of the beater is really to process the half stuff that you're using into whatever kind of pulp and qualities that you're looking for. From there, it goes into my trash can system here. Got a whole can full of pulp in here. Here, I have a lot of my pigments and additives, all the different colors. We also have sizing and we have inclusions. It's actually really a treat to have a separate room for your beaters because they can be very loud. Um, so I close the doors, kind of block that off, and hope I'm not bothering the neighbors too much. But <laughs> This is really where I am most of the days, standing right here at my vat. I've got a vat full of water. Pulp is added from my big trash cans full of pulp. And you can see I have a wide variety of mold and decals around me. There aren't that many mold makers out there. I can only think of one or two off the top of my head. Most people, when they start handmade paper, they make their own tools which is what I did. <laughs> I added my little magic to it where they're actually magnetic. Each piece kind of comes together really swiftly and nicely. But I also make all of these tools myself and sell them to other paper makers so that 
you can try these out too and they really work so well. So they're, they're really fun to share with people. When you get started and you don't have as much stuff, you kind of make do with what you have and you, you get scrappy, you figure out how to recycle things, use what you have and build it up. And a lot of the things that I still use in my studio are, are the same, same old things that I managed to figure out how to make it work. So this is where we make all of the mold and decals. It is one of the more important paper making tools. It's essentially a bottom screen and the decal fits on the top, which kind of contains the pulp within there. Kind of a difficult tool to get your hands on, so I started making my own back in the day. They've come a long way <laughs> since then from makeshift like window screens and like staples and not knowing how to do everything. But then I enlisted the help of my husband who, who is a woodworker. He helped me design these simple frame designs. We figured out how to use epoxy in a really effective way. Because as you can imagine, wood in water is not a good thing. So this epoxy gives a nice thick coating on there, encapsulates all of the wood, keeps it nice and flat, because wood also likes to shift a little bit. So these are really uh, amazing tools, uh, if I do say so myself. <laughs> My nice little contribution to paper making world, I think. And then to make the beautiful art with it is, is really, it's really kind of special. <laughs> Coming here, the real draw was that we had the basement space that could finally separate from my paper from all of the dusty <laughs> epoxy work. So now that I have separate space for everything and room for everything, it's been incredible. Final step in handmade paper really is to dry it. And it can be a long process. This is one that I've developed uh, with a few tutorials online. It's essentially, they call them dry boxes, but it's layers of cardboard layered with polyester felt and window screen. So in between the polyester felt are the sheets of paper. So I lay each sheet in there. And so the felts soak up the water slowly and then the cardboard essentially soaks it up. And then the fan in the back is blowing through the cardboard and that's slowing drying, but also keeping it really flat when you keep nice weight on top. So you're restricting the, the shrinkage of the paper. Most paper wants to shrink when it dries that I can have this space of my own that I, I control all of it. <laughs> and I am a little nitpicky about where things go and I, I'm very specific in, in what I like. And even as a kid, I always wanted to have like a space of my own to create. I didn't even know what I wanted to create. It was just all about having my own space. It's mind blowing and it, it's exciting and I don't know where it'll bring me in, in the future, but that's kind of the, the beauty of it that you don't know and you can, you'll figure it out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade.